Okay. Well, it looks like we're on exceptions today. An exception is an error that occurs during execution. So here's an example. I have a small program where we will ask a user to type in two numbers, divide those numbers, then display the result. So what if I type in something that's not a number? I would like to divide the number five by the word pizza. We'll encounter an exception, and this interrupts our program. We encountered a format exception. Input string was not in a correct format. So any code that is considered dangerous, where it might cause an exception, we can surround with a try block. So I would consider this code to be dangerous. So type try, then a set of curly braces. Surround any code that is considered dangerous with the set of curly braces. Now, if we have a try block, we also need a catch block. So after the try block, add catch. And the catch block catches and handles exceptions when they occur. But we need to specify what kinds of exceptions we would like to catch and handle. So catch, parentheses, curly braces. And this is kind of like a parameter. So I would like to catch and handle any format exceptions, then add E. So if we encounter that same exception again, instead of our program being interrupted, we can do something else instead. So let's write a message and let the user know to type in only numbers. Enter only numbers, please. And let's try that again. Enter number one, five. Enter number two, pizza. Enter only numbers, please. And this did not interrupt our program. That's the important thing. Now, these try and catch blocks, they will only catch and handle format exceptions. What if somebody accidentally divides by zero or intentionally does so? So we do not have a catch block set up for that. We can add multiple catch blocks. So let's catch any divide by zero exceptions. So catch parentheses, curly braces, and the exception we would like to catch is divide by zero exception, then add E. So if somebody attempts to divide by zero, let's display a message. You can't divide by zero, idiot. But this only occurs with integer division. So let's turn our doubles, X and Y, into integers. And we'll have to change this cast as well. So change two double, two int 32. So if we attempt to divide a number by zero, which we can't mathematically do, this is what happens. Enter number one, five. Enter number two, zero. You can't divide by zero, idiot. And this will not interrupt our program. Now, you can add a catch block that just catches everything, but it's not considered good practice to add by itself. So sometimes I'll add a like catch all block, just in case if there's any exceptions I do not anticipate. So at the end, we can add exception, E. But it's difficult to let the user know what went wrong exactly because it'll just print when any exception occurs. Something went wrong. So this will catch everything. Let's remove the first two catch blocks. So let's take five divided by the word pizza. Something went wrong. Now catch exception E does catch everything, but it's considered poor practice to have this by itself because basically you're shrugging when something goes wrong. You should let the user know exactly what went wrong. So it's better practice to catch specific exceptions first. Then at the end, you can add, you know, exception E in case there's anything you don't anticipate. By the way, I changed X and Y back to doubles. Now, the last thing we need to talk about is the finally block. The finally block is optional. It always executes regardless if an exception is caught or not. So at the end, let's create a finally block. Type finally, curly braces. If there's anything you'd like to do after your try and catch block, regardless if an exception occurs or not, you can place that here. What people typically use the finally block for is to close any open files if they need to reset anything. But for this example, let's just print something. So let's display a thank you message. Thanks for visiting. If we do not encounter any exceptions, this finally block will still execute. Five divided by one is five. Thanks for visiting. Now, if we do encounter and catch an exception, well, that finally block is still going to execute as well. Thanks for visiting. So yeah, those are exceptions. They are errors that occur during execution. They interrupt the normal flow of our program. Any code that is considered dangerous, we should surround with a try block and catch any exceptions when they occur. And finally can be added and it will execute regardless if an exception is caught or not. So yeah, those are exceptions. I will post this code in the comment section down below. If you can, smash that like button, drop a random comment down below. And well, yeah, those are exceptions in C-sharp.